I was born and raised outside of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and grew up in a large family. And when I was 19, my family moved to upstate New York. They moved kind of to the middle of nowhere. And in that time frame, my younger brother was killed in a car accident, and uh, my family just fell apart. My parents um, subsequently got divorced. And it was just a, a, a time in my life that was turbulent. It was difficult. It was, I had no one to turn to. Someone invited me to a church, and I started going to that church. And, and in that church, I found for the first time what seemed to be a really healthy family, and it, it is a really healthy family. Um, but there was an assumption that I understood the gospel, but I didn't understand it. I didn't understand my sin, and I didn't understand the Bible as it applied to all of those things. And so I, I just kind of went through life at this church, went on staff at this church, uh, love the people at this church, um, was loved by them so well and discipled by them. Um, but I was discipled and loved all without a very key piece in my heart being transformed by the gospel. So you can't do that for very long before all the wickedness starts to just show itself for what it really is. And um, so I was 29, and I, at that point, had just been really wrestling with some, some theology. I did not understand my sin. I did not understand Christ's life. I did not understand the cross, and I did not understand grace at all. Um, and the Bible was just a rule book to me. It was not a book of life. And so um, I had a tearful conversation with my pastor at that point, who is my boss, and I just said, you can fire me if you want, but this is where I am. Um, I don't think God is good, and if he's good, he's not good to me. And if he's not good to me, I don't want to serve a God like that. Um, and he, he is such a tender man, and he, his eyes filled with tears, and he said, I, I want to give you a book, and he gave me The Reason for God by Tim Keller. And he said, just wrestle with some of the ideas in this book, and we're not going to fire you. <laughs> just wrestle with this. And that same week, someone gave me a sermon by a guy named Matt Chandler. I'd never heard of Matt before, and it was called Preaching the Gospel to the Dechurched. And I listened to that sermon 16 times that week, and I, I just kept listening and listening, and I, I thought, there's something in this message that I've never heard before. There is a horribly wrong assumption that Christians know it. We've got to get back to discussing the nature and character of the triune God of the universe. It's what sustains, it what, it's what empowers, it's what creates awe and worship, which is what we were created for. And two months later, I had quit my job, I had sold everything, packed my little car, and I drove to Dallas. I had no plan, no place to live, no job. Um, I just knew I want what he has. I want that. And so I got there, and someone said, oh, you need to go to, to Jen Wilkins' women's Bible study. And I said, I don't go to women's Bible studies. Women cry, and they gossip, and I'm not interested in that. I want some meat. Um, and I said, oh, it's not like that. It will change your life. And so I showed up the first night, and I'm a back row sitter. I'm kind of an introvert, and I usually sit in the back. And um, I was group number one, and the only open seat on group number one in the very front row was front and center, right in front of Jen. So I was in the most uncomfortable possible place I could be. And I was sitting there, and Jen began to read from Genesis 1-1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The scales fell from my eyes. I felt absolutely like I could see for the first time in my life. Um, and what I could see was that God was a creator and that he is wholly distinct from me. He created, period, the heavens and the earth. And, and from there, my heart was, it was transformed in an instant in that moment. I saw God in a way that I'd just never seen him before. Um, and then the next four months, he just spent just revealing my sin, just peeling back. But I had never, that had never been a pleasant experience for me before. I'd felt found out before, I'd felt exposed before. The next four months, as I walked through Genesis with um, Jen Wilkin and that, that Bible study of 400 women, um, he just began to reveal the gospel in all of scripture. The concept of like Christ being in Genesis and Exodus, like that, 
blew my mind and it just continued to blow my mind. And so really the next four to five months was just a really sweet, sweet time of being in the Word for hours every single day and just learning that this book held the words of life and they were um, not just to save me, but they were to sustain me and that he was writing his story from the very beginning and he was loving me from the very beginning. We went to have coffee and she told me her story and I was blown away. The Lord is so faithful to His Word that there He was working the Holy Spirit, moving as Lori sat out there. And really, I think it's a perfect example of a time where we were talking about the nature and character of God, and that is what gives hope. That's the story of how He brought me to a saving knowledge of Him. I love that story because it reminds me that uh, no one is too far from the Gospel. Um, and that the Word is necessary for life and godliness.